15. Thank you, Jesus. Matthews chapter 15. We are excited about what God is doing with men. We have a person right here that needs a Bible. If you have one, uh, Brother Dan, he's raising his hand. I think he needs a Bible. Do we have any more Bibles? We're out of Bibles. Okay, somebody share uh, with the person next to you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We have a, we're excited about what God is doing with men here in the Shield of Faith. I want to take just a quick moment and talk about it. Not that I'm against women or anything like that, just so that you know. But traditionally, I've been saved 25 years, so I'm talking from experience, not just making up something. I would meet men on the streets. I have a street ministry. That's what I did for many years. And sometimes they would go to church, and if they did, they didn't know where they went. They would, my wife goes down there, and so that's where I go. And what's the pastor's name? I'm not really sure. It's over there. But in these last days, God is doing something different with men. He's raising up men that love God. Can I get a good amen? amen? Men that are taking the lead and understanding who God really is and the power of recognizing God in the life of the family. Men that are able to not only know the church or the pastor, but know Jesus for themselves. And here at Shilla Faith, the Lord gave me a vision that we would have 300 men at the altar crying. He has given me that vision for several years, and I believe God. When he gave me the vision, we had three men. How many men of God are in the house this morning? Stand on your feet. How many men of God are in the house? Come on and stand on your feet. How many men of God are able to be counted that are in the house of God this morning? Hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah like you mean it. Hallelujah. It's that time. We're in the last days and it's that time. It's time for men to take positions of authority in the kingdom of God. 300 men at the altar crying means 300 men that have a humble and repentant spirit. How many of you know that men can be a little haughty? Hello. Yeah, they don't want to say too much. You can say, okay, you're in a church. You can say, <laughs> but it's God that's bringing us to our knees. It's God that's causing us to bow down. And the good thing is I'm glad about it. Anybody glad about it? You want a nation changed, you let the men's hearts be changed. I should be able to get some real good amens from women. Hello. How many women want the men to take the lead? Someone say hallelujah. I know I'm not speaking some foreign language. How many women in the house want men to take the lead in the kingdom of God? Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. This morning I'm just going to, won't be lengthy, I'm going to take my time and talk to you. And I hope that I can encourage you this morning. That is my mission. That I would say something that, even if I could say something small, insignificant, that would impact your heart and mind concerning the kingdom of God. I pray that you would be attentive this morning and I ask that God would speak into your heart. It's family and friend day, which is very fitting for the church because the church is filled with families and friends. Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. That's the wrong scripture, that's for sure. Y'all got to bear with me because that's definitely not the right scripture. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. Hallelujah. But y'all know I'm never at a loss for words. <laughs> 
Matthew 25, 21. But we'll stop at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 21, and then we'll come back because I definitely want to read that scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. And we'll start reading at verse 23. Paul, the writer, says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. The key portion of scripture there is found in verse 24. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Matthew chapter 25, 21. Normally we use that scripture for communion service, but the Lord gave that to me this morning to make a point. He's done great things for us, y'all. Matthew chapter 25, verse 21. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. The Lord gave me two titles this morning. The one title there is something special about the church. Subtopic, I won't be left out. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I bless you. Lord, I love you this morning. I honor you for all things. And Lord, I pray for your anointing even right now. The anointing that makes preaching easy. I rebuke the adversary, Lord. I pull down every stronghold, everything that would hinder the move of the Spirit of God. I loose the angels of God right now. I loose the love of God that prevails. We believe you and we trust you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I won't be left out. I know. Some people, you, you get, it's kind of hard to say that. But you got to declare it anyhow. One thing I learned about life is that only the strong survive. And only those that believe things get things. And the one thing that I want to inherit is what? Eternal life. And so no matter where I'm standing right now, my mind is made up is that I, I won't be left out. The church is the greatest organism that has ever existed to this day. It is an organism because it is a whole that's made up of multiple parts. We are a body and Jesus Christ is the head. Even though the parts are independent of one another, they are still cohesively working together to create what God calls the body of Christ. Just stick with me this morning. It's going to be okay. I'm not going to hurt your feelings. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4 like this, the whole body is fitly joined together and is compacted to which every joint supplies. That means each person in the body of Christ is important. And the body of Christ is strong based on how each part is working and it's bringing an increase. Sometimes we look at the church and we look at the pastor and we think that the pastor has the responsibility of building the church. But God has made it very clear to me and to many others that I'm just one part of a big whole. So I want you to know this morning that when I talk about the church, I'm not talking about Sheila Faith Christian Center. I'm not only talking about Silver Face Christian Center, I'm talking about the body of Christ worldwide. When I say the shield, I'm talking about us. When I say the church, I'm talking about everybody. Churches in Gilbert, churches in Ahwatukee, churches in Kenya, churches in the Philippines, churches worldwide. Somehow, I want to try to dispel 
with a disnomer that the church has gotten a bad rap. He has been accused of caring only about money. Every time you talk to someone about church, it's like the first thing that comes out of their mouth is money. They think that the church only cares about making money and the preachers only care about getting rich. Part of it's his own fault. Because all you see in the media is pastors with Bentleys. I don't know how that happens. Hello. And flying jets. And it's our fault because we have spent too much time focusing on finances. I've never seen in the scripture anyone going to hell because they're poor. I'm going to sink in a little bit this morning. I'm going to take my time with y'all this morning. It's going to be okay. You're going to have a good time in a minute. 